Because we just read for you who the nation, nation of, uh, who the kingdom of heaven is for, right? So now, let's see what Christ said. Read. This is Jesus Christ again. Read. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 19 and verse 16. Bring it out. And behold, what came and said unto him, good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Verse 17. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good, but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Oh, Ingrid, you heard that? What did he say? If you get, if you get into the other kingdom of heaven, what? That's okay. Okay, it's okay. We're going to be patient, all right? We ain't in no rush. We want you to get this. That's what we're here for. Right. Read it again from the top. Verse 16. And behold, what came and said unto him, Good master. So what came into Christ and said unto him, Good master. He called Christ master or rabbi. Read. What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So the brother wanted to get eternal life. Right. Another word translation for eternal life is the kingdom of heaven. So the brother said, good master, Jesus Christ, the black Messiah. What should I do that I may get into those uh, their kingdom? Read. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? So Christ is telling him, why you calling me good? This is Christ being humble though. Now, Jesus Christ came on the earth and did no sin. Surely he's he, uh, worthy enough to be called good, right. but the, Christ is being humble. He said, don't call me good, read. There is none good, but one, that is God. So he's giving all glory back to the Most High God, his creator. That's right. That also goes to show you that Jesus Christ and, the, and God or the Most High is not the same people because a lot of times people say they're the same that's two different entities okay you got the most high and then you got a son which is jesus the christ okay but let's stick to the point read but if thou will enter into life remember the brother asked jesus christ how i'm gonna get to wealth so christ is gonna ask him he said read it again but if thou will enter into life so if you want to get into the kingdom of heaven England. Ingrid, sorry. If you want to get to the kingdom of heaven, Ingrid, read. Keep the commandment. Do what? Keep the commandment. Do what? Keep the commandment. Do what? Keep the commandment. Hear yeah, that, sister? So how do you get into the kingdom of heaven? Keep the commandments, right? So now, we're going to get some commandments real quick. Because you want eternal life, right? You want to get to the kingdom, right? Give me, uh, give me, yeah, Deuteronomy 22. We're going to get some commandments, uh, so, so, we, so you can uh, understand how to get to the kingdom. Because is it only, is it only 10? Is it only 10 commandments? That's what they said, right? Stay, stay, stay right here, little sister. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman! Who? The woman! The who? The woman! Is that pertaining to you, sis? Okay, read. Shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So, I'm going to read it again. What are you talking about? Homosexuality. Uh, and he talks about that, but not in this particular verse. Okay, we're going to read it again. Read. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So the woman shouldn't wear anything that pertains to a man. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, read. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What are some woman garments that a man shouldn't wear? Skirts. Dresses. Purses, right? Those are bras, pennies. Those are clothing that a man, an entire man, should not have on. Read it, uh, read. For all that do so are abomination unto the Lord thy God. So if you wear those things, you are an abomination unto the Lord thy God. Now go back to Revelation chapter 20, 20. And, uh, what ought you do? What ought you to do? You should, but what are you, what type of clothes are you should wear? You should wear a skirt, right? 
Okay. Now, remember it said, who all that, wear those things if you wear shorts, if you wear pants, you are an abomination unto the Lord, thank God. Bring it out. If you, wear, if you do those things, I got to be real with you, sister, because your soul is at stake. And I ain't going to play with you. I got to give you the word. Un unadulterated. You understand? Ain't nothing more comfortable for, nothing should be more comfortable for a woman than putting on a dress. We, what happened is we've been over here and we had assimilated for so long the wrong way we have became comfortable with it. And to the point where we say statements like, well, let me uh, put on some shorts to get comfortable. That's really not comfortable to you. You know what I mean? Because it's all type of infections come from a woman wearing things that like that because she's supposed to breathe down them. Breathe. Because remember it said that what? It is an abomination. A woman that wears, uh, a woman that wears pants it's abomination to the Lord. Bring now we're going to read about abomination. What's going to happen to abomination? Abominable people. Read. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 21 and verse 8. Bring it up. But the fearful and unbelieving. So the fearful and the unbelieving, the people that don't believe the words of the Bible, read. And the abominable. And the what? Abominable. And the what? Abominable. Woman in pants. Abominable. Woman in shorts. Abominable. Man with dress. Abominable. Read. And murderers. And mur murderers. Uh, so God is looking at you. If you wear that type of attire, you got the same judgment as a murderer. Read. Right. And whoremonger. And if you horn out our sisters, baby mamas here, baby mamas there, you ain't taking care of your families, you jumping, hip stop, hips, jumping around from house to house. Jumping to different women, you're a whore mother. God let, got you labeled with them too. Read. And sorcerer. And if you like to smoke weed, smoke crack, toot heroin, take pills that's not prescribed to you just for uh just to be hot. Read. And idolater. And if you go to your Sunday worship church, read. And all liars. And all liars. If you lie, there's no such thing as a little white lie. Read. Shall have their part. In the light which burneth with fire. So how they part where? In the light which burneth with fire. In the lake that burns with fire. Read. And brimstone, which is the second death. So it ain't talking about right now when you die. It's talking about when God opened the books and he see your life. And then he going to judge you with the Bible. So you're going to have your life because you got an angel that's recording everything you do. So everything you do is being documented. Right. So God gonna take the Bible, his word, and he's gonna take your life and line it up. If you didn't repent from the sin that you was in, or for example, wearing shorts after the word came forth, after you heard the words of God, because who, who wrote this? The Mosaic, God. God wrote this, God gave the message. Right. And if you turn away from that, you it's talking about that second death when God judged you. It said, you're gonna have your, uh, read that part again. And they shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Which is the second death, meaning your soul burning for eternity if you don't repent right now. Bring it out. You understand? So th this is very important. I hope you take it as such. Give me uh, Psalms 119.59. Let's, let's see what your forefather did. Let's see what your forefather did, because you ever heard of King David? He, that's your forefather. This is the book of... Remember, this is, this is your forefather, King David. Let, after he heard what, which way to go, he's going to show you a righteous example on which way you should go. Read. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 59. I thought on my ways and turned my feet unto thy testimonies. I made haste and delayed not to keep thy commandments. You hear what King David said? We're gonna read it again because sometimes old English is hard to be understood a lot for a lot of our people. So we're gonna break it down and give you the sense of what he's really talking about. Read it again. I thought on my way. So King David, he thought on his own ways and what he wanted to do. He realized his ways weren't right. Because your ways, want you wanna do whatever feel good to you in your ways. You know what I mean? You might wanna eat that shrimp, that crab, that lobster, that pork. I'm not saying, I'm saying people in general. But when you find out you can't do it, you have to stop. I don't even work it out, but Great. I see, you see what I'm saying? That's your own way. But, but we ain't gonna get into that right now. We are gonna finish with the point here. So your ways, understand your ways is contrary to God. Your ways is fleshly. 
by nature. He said he thought on his own ways, read. And turned my feet unto thy testimony. He said, nah, 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 my ways ain't good. I'm gonna turn my feet to what the Bible says. Read. I made haste. Did what? I made haste. What did King David do? Made haste. What does it mean to make haste? Underlay, 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 underlay. What that mean? Hurry. He hurried and turned himself around, did a 360 and then followed the Lord. Read. It delayed not. It didn't delay not. He didn't put it off from day to day. Right. I'm going to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it uh, maybe next month, next week. He said he delayed not, meaning as soon as he got home, he corrected himself. He prayed. He fasted. He prayed. Excuse me. He prayed and got himself right. Read. To keep thy commandments. And he, he pray, to keep his commandments. Why? Why do you make haste to keep God's commandments? All praise, that means you're listening. So he wanted to get to the kingdom of heaven. So he said, you know what? Let me do what I got to do to make sure I get there. He strived to enter into the straight gate. This is the book of Luke, chapter 13 and verse 24. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. What does that word strive mean? No, no, I, no don't go there yet. Let's deal with the first word. Hold on, you know what? We're going to read it all the way through. So maybe you'll catch it then. Read. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For many, I say unto you, will seek to enter in and shall not be able. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Read it, read it again. Read it slow. Strive. What? Strive. What does that mean? Her, her strive means to fight for something. Because it, look, look around you in the world. Look at all this wickedness going on. In order to enter into the kingdom of heaven, it's a straight gate. It's narrow, meaning you got to walk on a narrow path to keep the commandments. You might have to, some of your people that you grew up with, you might have to uh, get rid of them. Because they don't, they not, it says strive, meaning read. Strive to enter in at the straight gate for me. What? For me. Christian church. Me. Uh, Muslim. Me. Buddhist. Me. Read. I say unto you, will seek to enter in. Because a lot of people thinking they get the kingdom. You got faithful church goers every Sunday. They think they get in the kingdom of God. But when you read the Bible, they actually walk contrary to everything that the Bible says. That's right. They said, God, that's why he said, strive to enter into the kingdom. Because many are going to think that they're going to enter in. Read. It shall not be able. And they ain't going to be able. Christ don't say, depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. You, you understand? That's some hard words. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.